the interwar period and the second world war. The first half of the 20th century is known in history as the era of world wars. The first world war was considered by many to be a war to end all wars. Yet, the developments during the next 20 years led the world into another war, more destructive, more widespread and much larger in scale. In order to understand the reasons for the outbreak of this war, we really need to study the interwar period in detail. The end of the First World War did not end the rivalries between the European nations. Even the peace treaties failed to ensure peace. The treaties were harsh on the defeated countries and thus sowed the seeds of future conflicts. They even failed to satisfy the territorial ambitions of some of the allied powers. In many of these countries, strong dictators rose to power and spread the message of national chauvinism. The most important fact was that imperialism, the basic cause of war, was not destroyed. The Russian Revolution and the emergence of the Soviet Union also divided the world into two groups, those who favored the revolution and those who feared its effects. Most of the West European countries belonged to the latter group. They considered socialism to be a threat to their social and economic systems. Soviet Russia was also anti-imperialist and supported the freedom struggles in the colonies of Asia and Africa. The First World War ended with the signing of the peace treaties at a conference held in Paris. The important leaders at the conference were the United States, President Woodrow Wilson, the British Prime Minister Lloyd George and the French Prime Minister George Clemenceau. One of the first acts of the peace conference was the decision to create a world organization called the League of Nations for the promotion of international cooperation, peace and security. The Covenant, that is the formal agreement of the League was approved in April 1919. The agreement required all members to reduce armaments in the interest of peace. If any member country resorted to war, then collective action would be taken against that country. The trade relations with the aggressor country would also be cut off. However, the League of Nations could never be an effective organization. Two major countries, Soviet Union and Germany, were not allowed to become its member for many years. United States, despite its leading role in the formation of the League, decided not to join it. Hence, when the aggression began in the 1930s, the League failed to prevent the Second World War. The peace treaties were to be based on President Wilson's peace proposals or the 14 points, which promised to bring an era of peace, freedom, democracy, self-determination, the right to have a say in one's own government. But these principles were ignored when the Allies signed the Treaty of Versailles with Germany. According to the treaty, Germany was blamed as the aggressor and forced to accept responsibility for the damage caused to the Allies during the war. Germany was to pay $6,600 million as compensation to them. The German coal mining area in Tsar Valley was put under the control of the League for 15 years while the mines were transferred to France for that period. The newly created state of Poland was provided a corridor which gives her an outlet to the Baltic Sea. This corridor separated East Prussia from the rest of Germany. The port of Danzig, which lay in the corridor, was made a free city. The strength of the German army was to be limited to one lakh and it was permitted to have any air force or navy. Germany's colonial possessions were divided amongst the victorious powers. Germany was made to sign the treaty under threat of invasion. In fact, no German representative was invited to attend the conference, so the Germans called it a diktat peace. Some of the seeds of the Second World War were thus sown at Versailles. A study of the post-war map of Europe shows us that almost all European countries emerged from war with changed frontiers. Germany surrendered Alsace-Lorraine 
to France, which it had captured in 1871. In the north, it gave up some areas to Belgium and Denmark. Apart from losses in Europe, Germany also gave up right on its African colonies and privileges in China. Thus, after war, the Germans were a discontented lot. Italy fought the war on the Allied side to satisfy her territorial ambitions in Austria, Turkish Empire and Africa. But all that Italy gained from the peace settlement was a small part of Austria. Russia suffered more casualties in war than all the Allies put together. It withdrew from the war after signing a treaty with Germany. By this treaty, it accepted the independence of Poland, Finland and the Baltic states of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. Added to this were the problems of civil war, military intervention and economic collapse. Poland, which had disappeared from the map in 1815, after being annexed by the three empires of Austria, Prussia and Russia, now reappeared when the three empires declined together. However, the old enmity with the new neighboring countries could not be wiped out so easily. By a separate treaty, Austria was reduced to a small state. You would remember that Italy had also gained some territory at the cost of Austria. All the newly formed countries had to deal with the problems of border dispute political upheavals and economic difficulties. The treaty with Turkey resulted in the complete dismemberment of the Turkish Empire. Turkey lost its Arab possessions in North Africa, in Southwest Asia, and almost all its territories in Europe. Some of these territories came under British and French control as mandates. Russia and Greece also gained some areas. Turkey was then reduced to a small state. The Turks rose in rebellion against the treaty under the leadership of Mustafa Kemal. The Sultan was removed from power and a republic was established in Turkey in 1923. With Mustafa Kemal as his first president, he began the process of modernization of the country. The people called him Ataturk or father of the Turkeys. An understanding of these changes tells us that most countries remained dissatisfied with the peace treaties. Was another redivision of the world necessary? Was another war the only solution? The immediate post-war years were full of problems for almost all countries of Europe. These included reorganization of the economy, resettlement of the survivors of war, and growing unemployment. The working classes in many countries tried to organize socialist revolutions on the Soviet pattern, but they were ruthlessly suppressed. In their place, strong anti-democratic movements arose in Hungary, Poland, Italy, Portugal, Germany, and Spain, which can generally be termed as fascist. The term fascism is of Italian origin and was first used for the movement started by Benito Mussolini in Italy. The fascist adopted as a symbol the fasces or a bundle of rods which represented state power. The main features of these movements were opposition to democracy and socialism, establishment of dictatorial rule, extreme nationalism and militarism. Mussolini made eloquent speeches about the glory of ancient Rome and urged people to restore Italy's honor. Many ex-soldiers, after listening to his speeches, joined his armed gangs, which was a private army called black shirts. Mussolini used these gangs to break up strikes and to spread terror among the socialists and communists. The ruling classes of Italy did not curb the action because they also wanted to prevent a socialist revolution. In 1921, Mussolini set up the National Fascist Party. In October next year, he sent 30,000 of his black shirts in a march on Rome. The government surrendered without a fight and the king asked Mussolini to form the new government. By 1928, Mussolini had destroyed all parliamentary opposition and had begun to rule as a dictator. All non-fascist parties were banned. He used imprisonment, torture, and organized killings to suppress the socialists and the communists. He set up the fascist Grand Council and took the title of Duke of the Leader. He tried to make Italy a great power by advocating a policy of war and expansion. You are already familiar about the humiliating defeat of Germany and the downfall of its monarchy. 
In 1919, a Republican form of government was established under a new constitution, which provided for a president, a chancellor, and an elected parliament. Adolf Hitler had been a soldier in the German army and had fought bravely for four years, winning an Iron Cross. Disappointed at Germany's defeat, he now decided to join politics. In 1921, Hitler's powerful speeches and his organizational skills made him the leader of the Nationalist Socialist German Workers' Party, in short, the Nazi Party. Like fascists, it had its own army called the Storm Troopers or the Brown Shirts. By 1930, the Brown Shirts numbered about one lakh men. The aim of the Nazi was to wipe out the humiliation of Versailles and to make Germany powerful and feared in the world. The Nazis were similar to fascism in their opposition to democracy, civil liberties, and socialism. They used brutal force to crush any opposition. Hitler put the blame for Germany's defeat in war on the Jews, so extermination of the Jewish race became an important feature of Nazism. He believed in the purity and superiority of the German race calling them pure blood Aryans and wanted the union of all Germans to create a greater Germany. Very large sections of the people were marked by the Nazis. They appealed to the national pride of Germans and gained support for Nazi politics. The economic development of the 1930s helped in Hitler's rise to power. A severe depression hit America and Europe. As a result, almost 8 million workers in Germany became unemployed. The Nazi party now began to spread its influence. The communist and the socialist failed to unite against the Nazis. Consequently, the Nazi party, which had won only 12 seats in the parliament in 1928, became the single largest party in 1932. President Hindenburg appointed Hitler as chancellor and asked him to form the new government. Soon after coming to power, Hitler unleashed a reign of terror. All democratic principles were put aside. In February 1933, the Nazis set the parliament building on fire and put the blame on the socialist and communist. Over 60,000 people were imprisoned or sent to concentration camps. By 1933, all political parties other than the Nazi party were banned. Following Hindenburg's death on August 2, 1934, Hitler became the president of Germany. An organized campaign for the total extermination of Jews was launched. Simultaneously, a program of militarization was introduced. The victory of Nazis brought the world closer to war. Japan had been the only country in Asia to escape colonization. By the end of the 19th century, Japan's expressionist policy led her to a war with China. The defeat of China enabled Japan to gain a foothold in the country. In 1905, Japan defeated Russia in war and took over Manchuria, the Russian sphere of influence in China. This was the first instance of an Asian country defeating a mighty European nation in war. Later, Japan also annexed Korea. The outbreak of the First World War gave her a chance to acquire Germany's positions in China and some German-held islands in the Pacific. After the war, the League gave her the mandate over the islands. By this time, Japan's military had become a dominating force in the society. It destroyed democracy within the country and became an advocate of extreme nationalism and expansionism. In less than 50 years, Japan changed from a peaceful country to an aggressive military power. During the 1930s, she was to establish close relations with the fascist governments of Germany and Italy for another redivision of the world. The year 1929 saw one of the greatest depressions the world ever faced. A significant development after the First World War was the decline in the supremacy of Europe and the growing importance of the United States of America. While the war damaged the economy of the European countries, the United States economy became stronger. No war was fought on the U.S. soil, and the industrial expansion also continued during war as it supplied arms and ammunition to the Allies. However, a decade later, serious economic problems arose in the country, which later spread to the rest of Europe also. By this time, America followed the capitalist system of production, in which maximum profit was made by the owners of industry. Most of the workers, however, lived below the poverty line. Thus, not many people had the means to buy goods which were being produced 
by the industries. So, overproduction and maldistribution of purchasing power were the two main reasons or the causes of the Great Depression which hit USA in October 1929 and then spread worldwide. The crisis began with a fall in the share prices leading to a collapse of the United States stock market. In one day, nearly 16 million shares were sold on the New York Stock Exchange. During the next four years, almost 9,000 banks closed operations and millions of people lost their life savings. As goods remained unsold, thousands of factories shut down, resulting in unemployment, poverty and starvation. Most of the European countries, except Soviet Union, also suffered as they had become dependent on the US economy, especially on the American banks. The effects of the crisis in these countries were similar. The number of unemployed in the world rose to over 50 million, of which 15 million were in the United States alone. The economic crisis also affected the political conditions in these countries. In the United States, the Democratic Party came to power with Franklin Roosevelt as president. He introduced a program of economic reforms and social welfare called New Deal. In Britain and France, labor-friendly governments came to power. Though fascist movements arose in Britain and France, they were not successful. In Germany and Italy, post-war discontent and depression led to victories of fascist parties. During the 1930s, the foreign policies of the United States, Britain and France were also similar. They did not adopt a strong position against the fascists. Their main concern was to check the spread of socialist ideas and workers' movements. Thus, when fascist aggression began, they did nothing to check it. Instead, they chose to appease fascism in the hope that it would destroy communism. Now, certain developments started taking place in the USSR. We have already discussed Russia's participation in war and the Russian Revolution. This was followed by a civil war and the Allied military intervention. All this had resulted in the collapse of the Russian economy. There was a shortage of food and the industrial production declined drastically. The consequent famine worsened the conditions further. Lenin was forced to take strict measures. The Soviet government forcibly seized surplus food from rich farmers to feed the rest of the population. Nothing could be brought or sold in the markets. The industrial produce was distributed to the workers in lieu of wages. People were encouraged and even forced to work for the good of their fellow men rather than for motive. The grim state of affairs which lasted from 1918 to 1921 was called war communism. The fierce opposition to the system mainly from the peasantry and some members of this led Lenin to replace it by the new economic policy in 1921. The harsh measures of war communism were withdrawn. Now the peasants gave one-tenth of their produce as tax and were allowed to sell the rest in the open markets. Most of the industries remained under strict control, yet smaller industries were given back to private owners. Payment of wages in cash was reintroduced. A new constitution was introduced in 1924 under which Russia became the Union of Soviet Socialist Republic. But after Lenin's death in 1924, a fierce power struggle arose within the party. There were serious differences among the senior leaders over the policies to be followed. Finally, Stalin emerged victorious, became the general secretary of the Communist Party and soon assumed great powers. Within a few years, the USSR started a vigorous program of industrialization through a series of five-year plans. The first plan was introduced in 1929. One of the aims of the plan was to bring about changes in agriculture. After the revolution, agricultural land had been redistributed among peasants, resulting in millions of small, less productive land holdings. To increase production, the government promoted the idea of collectivization of small farms. The peasants were both encouraged and forced to give a private ownership of farms. Land was pooled and they had to become members and joint owners of the collective farms. The Kulaks, who opposed collectivization, 
was severely dealt with. It is estimated that thousands perished during this period. The main effort of the plan was towards industrialization. Hence, the success was greater and soon Soviet Russia emerged a major industrial power in the world. It is important to remember that the capitalist countries at this time faced a severe economic crisis. The Soviet Union gave an example of a successful socialist economy which stood out and was adopted later by many colonies after independence. Most of the European countries and USA, however, did not recognize Soviet Russia till 1933. It became a member of the League of Nations only in 1934. The hostility towards Soviet Union continued even after this. When fascist aggression began in the 1930s, Soviet Union was the only major power that actively opposed them. The 1930s witnessed several acts of aggression by Italy, Germany and Japan. Most of the Western powers not only remained mute spectators to these acts, but even supported some of them, thereby helping the fascists prepare the stage for war. Now with this, I end up my today's discussion and I shall meet you again in another program. Thank you very much. Till then.